Hello everybody, welcome back to Cycle Fab. I'm Larry. Uh, today I'm going to finally coat the inside of this tank with Caswell, a epoxy coating product that I've uh, been wanting to use for a while now. I'm very fond of epoxy, just the way the chemical bonds are, it's a chain molecule. I know that it's strong. I have used tank sealers in the past I, they weren't epoxy. I don't know what a kind of chemical bond they had, but I'm not really having a very good luck with those. Um, so I want to try this, and if you'll just follow along with me, maybe you'll be able to get something out of this video that can help you also. So let's get into it. You have a simple mixture of two to one, and what I'm going to do is mix both of these together. I'm not going to split it and try to do two tanks or anything like that. It does say in the directions not to do that. I would really encourage you to read the directions before you do this. Now, I'm going, one thing that I'm not following the directions on is how to tape this off and protect my paint because I'm going to repaint this tank. So I'm not really worried about that. Also, the way the neck is on this tank where you put the fuel in at is a screw in type. It's not a raised bayonet. So basically what I'm looking at, you see this photo right here, is just a cut area. So the chances of me turning this thing upside down, epoxy running out all over the place, well, it's not going to happen. So I'm not really worried about that. Now, on the bottom side of the tank, I did cap the bypass outlets so fuel can go from one side to the other and what I'll do afterwards is go back in with the drill and clear those holes out. Now this hole right here is where my peacock goes and it's pretty good size a little over half inch. Well I have a sediment filter that fits up in there so after this initially turns to a soft plastic like substance and the directions say that takes 40 to 60 minutes. Then I'll go back in there with a razor blade and just cut that out best I can. Uh, I have to get it out because in order to get that sediment filter back up in there and get that 22 millimeter peacock to fit properly, it has to be cleaned out. So now the temperature range in here right now is 77 degrees. They advise between 70 and 85 degrees is where you want to operate this procedure at. Now, this shop that I'm working in is controlled by an AC unit, so I keep it the same temperature pretty much all the time. So I don't have to worry about it getting too cold or too hot. Everything that I use in my videos or stored in here. Now, uh, let's just go ahead and get into this. I wanna set the tank off to the side. And I will be using just a paint mixing bucket. I got this at a local hardware store. You can find them at any chain hardware store. They're very popular, painters use them. Now, I don't have to use one this big. I want to use one this big because I don't want to risk spilling anything. And I want to be able to mix this epoxy up fairly quickly and pour it in the tank very quickly. Um, now, I got a funnel that I modified and I cut the end of it off. Like I said, I want the epoxy when I pour it in to go directly into that tank and that's it. Then I start the process of rotating the tank. In other words, I don't want any lag time. I don't want this stuff to set up or have a chance of it. I know it's not going to, it's just I want to be sure and get a thorough coating on the inside of my tank. And then after I do that, I'll pull the bottom plug out and drain the remainder into here and just let the rest go on the table and sit for about 40 or 60 minutes and come back and check on it. Now, let's get started on this. This is part A, 16 ounces. I don't remember if that's the resin or the hardener. This is the resin that would be the hardener, I think. Anyway, it doesn't matter because we're gonna mix both of these together, or I'm gonna mix both of them together. In their entirety. 
Now, I'll probably put this on fast forward. I don't know yet uh, because I don't want you guys getting bored. I mean, mixing epoxy is obviously mixing epoxy. Everybody's done it. Get as much out as I can. Okay. And just set that off to the side. One with the cap. Make sure you don't get your clothes into it. Now, part B. Okay, and just mix it up, fold it. This part is pretty much self-explanatory, so I'm not going to be talking during this. Okay, set this off to the side, get our tank. Make sure your funnel is clean and just pour this right in, every bit of the content. It's a good idea to have some shop rags with you. I've got lacquer thinner sitting off over here on the side. Um, I just like lacquer thinner, it's a really good strong solvent. Okay, that's, that should be fine. Really don't have anything left in the container, so it, it poured fairly well. It's not too thick, not too thin. Okay, everything's out of my funnel. Got a little bit off of the rag onto the paint, which no big deal. Like I said, I'm gonna repaint it anyway. I just don't want anything more to sand off than what I already have to sand. Now, according to the directions and common sense, you just wanna coat the inside of your tank. There you go. Clean this off the top of the table, make sure I don't get into it. This is my good shirt, by the way. <laughs> Honestly, I do not work out in the shop in this shirt. The only time I wear this shirt is when I'm on camera. Black makes you look thin, right? Unless you're up against a white background. Okay, let's get back to doing this. It's pretty gooey and coaty on the inside from what little I can see. Now, if any of you have watched my other videos, you have seen this tank. And I have had issues with this tank because in one of my videos, I actually blew it up. Not with fire, but with air pressure. I put too much in it. And I popped one of the factory welds that I got into and made too thin. So, it was in a location that I really couldn't get to to weld uh, because I have used a tank liner on this before. And to try and weld that, the heat would have a reaction with the tank liner that's already in there. Now, I did get most of that tank liner out with acetone. I'm not going to tell you the name of the brand of the tank liner. Red coat. Um, but anyway, I went ahead and squeezed the, the seam back in after coating it with JB Weld on the inside. Then wedged a piece of, I don't have it here right now, a piece of plastic in there to actually push it back together and hold it while it cured. 
So I'm not worried about, this is very malleable steel, uh, 1018, so it's very bendy. Um, it's not going to spring or pop open. And the JB Weld has worked well for me in the past on other projects. Now, when I say JB Weld, I'm talking about the old original formula. That's really the only one that I use. I've tried the newer ones, didn't like them. But you really can't beat the original product. And also, back here in the back where my right hand is, um, I had an issue with the seam where the top and lower portion of the tank came together. I got into that seam also when I was reshaping this tank and had just a minute pinhole um, where the seams came together. Now, of course, me putting too much pressure in the tank probably made that pinhole a little bit bigger, but that's on me. Again, I used JB Weld on that. It didn't actually blow it apart. Uh, I just coated it with JB Weld and pushed it down in there. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Now, this has been rolled around quite a bit in the areas that I definitely needed it to go to. And I'm very sure that it coated the top of the tank. Uh, by the way, this was a brand new tank when I started off with it. It was not rusted on the inside. I did get a little bit of rust on the neck. I did show you how to clean that up in one of my earlier videos. But, okay, I'm going to pull the plug out and drain the remainder into the bucket. And hopefully not make too much of a mess. <laughs> Trying to get all my epoxy over to this side that's still left inside the tank and get most of it out that's not coated. Maybe. Now this tank is a little over three gallons so there's a lot of surface area in it. So as far as how much it actually used, it probably used all of it. Uh, that's what it's looking like. Try to rotate the tank again to see if I can get more of that epoxy over to the left hand side of the tank where the peacock is and see if I can get more of it to drain out. No, not much coming out. Okay, I'm going to do something else. On teardrop tanks, uh, they look really cool, but they're really not very efficient. In other words, you get low pockets in them. Now there's nothing coming out of that drain hole. Okay, well, there's a little bit coming out of the peacock hole. All right, well, I guess it seems like a lot of the inside of the tank was coated. Because I know the epoxy just didn't disappear. Okay, I just want to set this off to the side. Now, what if any, yeah, there's one more drop. Gets on this table. No problem. If they're wood tables, uh, come back, sand it off. Uh, that's why I did not lay anything down. Uh, these are shop tables. I built them to be shop tables and I built them to be used. But if you're doing this on the kitchen table, I suggest you put something down because the wife will be very annoyed if you get epoxy on her nice kitchen table. So think about that. All right. I'll come back in about 60 minutes and see what's going on with all this. Okay, it's been an hour and I wanna, it's just a little tacky, uh, I, I, a little bit more than just tacky. It's set up, it's kinda like a plastic right now. So I wanna go ahead and take this drill bit and run it down in here. There we go. Yeah, it's coming up pretty good. Really good, actually. And go to the other side. Um, now, I'll come back and do this again after it's completely set, just to make sure that all the orifices are open and clear. See if I can... Got a pair of small scissors here just to kind of carve this out. It's just a thin coating, really. Um, I figured it would be, you know, thick, real thick, but it's not. But it is definitely there. 
that uh, sediment filter, I think, will fit in there as is. Uh, but that's okay. I mean, if it doesn't, I can always go back after the epoxy sets. Now, the direction set takes 24 to 36 hours. 24, I know will be fine, uh, but it will sit longer than that because I won't have time to paint it and within 24 hours and have it back on the bike ready to go. So I would, you know, be very comfortable with putting fuel in it after I get finished painting it because it's going to be more than 36 hours. But the directions do say you can put fuel in it after 24. So I believe it says that. Yep, 24. So anyway, now I did notice that down here in this part of the tank, you got to realize the tank sets at kind of an odd angle. So this is a low spot down here the epoxy gathered so it's the thickest down here which is fine because this is the area that i had a issue with but i noticed that the epoxy got hot um, due to the chemical reaction not so hot you can touch the tank or to peel the paint off or anything like that but it did definitely get warm so i know i got plenty of epoxy back here in the back and I'm sure that I got epoxy where I needed it down below on this side of the tank because it sits on the low side. If you want to see a couple of more of my videos, they're right over here to the left-hand side. I, I'm sorry, your right-hand side. So uh, I'll see you guys in a few days.